All right. We are back. The MMA after hour time, no time to waste. We have gone a little long here today because we've had so many guests. I think 11 on today's program. Once again, stacking the deck. So we must go to everyone's favorite segment. It is time, my friends. And now it's time to open for Rick's up picks. Your ears yes. And your minds. What does he have for us? Fans, Hopefully something good. Rick's picks. Rick's picks. Rick's picks are lots of fun. And his hair is in a bun. Because it's you already know what it is. Rick's picks. This is for everyone Ladies who says I talk too much. Boys and girls, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. It's the new craze. Yeah, I'm feeling it. Storm. Another good Live show in the books. The Fox Studios in beautiful New York City. 420. For Rick's picks. Episode 420. There he is. How are you celebrating 420, my friend? Working. Yeah. How about you? Working, doing a show, talking to people. I feel like you were trying to lead me somewhere with that. No, you're actually the one who reminded me. I don't pay attention to the numbers you do. I didn't know it was 420. Likely story. We should have had, uh, you know, maybe I should have had Nate Diaz on. I should have thought of that. Shh. I mean. I blew it. You're slipping. I blew it. You're slipping. Clearly. What is Creative Alliance? On the shirt? Yeah. Uh, it's actually... It's funny how you always well, I, gravitate toward the shirts. I'm just... I'm well, just here you are. There's a person there. Um, I haven't talked to you all day. I haven't seen you in this shirt. You were wearing, I think, a sweatshirt before. So I have to yeah. sort of, you know, assess the situation, take stock sure. of it all. Creative Alliance, I'm going to keep this brief, is um, a group of organizations, companies coming together um, to do good under the Civic Nation banner. There's a few um, initiatives that they're interested in. Um, one that you may be familiar with most notably is, uh, it's on us. It's, it's, so they did creative work around that campaign as, as well as some others. Does that have anything to do with weekend. this is us? The, sh the television yeah. show? What a show. Did you watch it last night after the Super Bowl? I heard, don't spoil it for me. I heard that they actually revealed how the dad dies. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, at the moment. You're missing out. Let me tell you something. Don't watch TV. Best show on don't TV. Don't really, don't really have time for that. Yeah, right. What are you so busy? You have one kid. Yeah, Come talk to little, me when you got three, bud. I'm a little bit busy. Don't. What do you don't do? really have time for? For uh, what are you doing? Leisurely television. I, I hear you taking phone calls, by the way, about your other gig in 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 the middle of the prep time. So you talking long about uh, press releases, all kinds of stuff. Don't Listen, think I don't notice that. And. and more evidence yeah. to what I'm discussing that I don't have time for. This is us. All right. Well, you're missing out. Um, anyway, you were kind of boring me with that whole creative alliance thing. So I had to get off that. Yeah. I, it wasn't me who volunteered that. Well, by usually the way. you have a show, a shirt that is like, you know, MMA related, or you're trying to, you know, push a client on us or hawk some kind of product. It's not just some rent. There's usually a method to my yes, madness, a message behind it. Sometimes all. a t-shirt is just a t-shirt, right, my friend. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, did you watch Super Bowl? I did. Did you enjoy it? I did. Was, did you have a Super a Bowl party or did you attend one? I had a Super Bowl party, which included myself. Yes. My wife, my daughter, Avery, uh -huh. my mom, and my stepfather. That is, that is, cool. that was the party. I like that party. Pizza, wings, breadsticks, chips and dip. Wow. Pizza from where? Simple, simple. Uh, Papa John's. Papa John's. Yeah, look. What? <laughs> it it was it was the Jeez. it was the fastest and cheapest way to get it there. Because a lot exactly the pizza joints are, are are busy. Yeah, pizza joints are kind of like busy at that time. And Papa John's, golly, how much was it? Like four bucks no. <laughs> for a large. Jeez, it was cheap. Man, and, and was it good? Honestly, it was greasy. It was fine. It was like reheated it was pizza. It was like DiGiorno's reheated. Not what, look, not my favorite. What, I have a good pizza joint in the neighborhood. And what they were they were pretty stacked up with orders. You gotta you gotta um, put in that order like at twelve. Some kind of rookie on Super Bowl Sunday. You gotta do that early. You can't just call I up. Was, I was doing other things. What, what kind friend. of toppings? What are we talking about? We got two pizzas. We got half sausage, half uh, pepperoni, and then half mushroom, half jalapeno. I like to keep them all separate. Okay, so you're you're not overlapping with any of the toppings. Don't don't like the don't like the the overloaded toppings. Mm. I like one topping per. but I per per slice, but I like a lot of different toppings. Have you ever tried pineapple green olives? The money, the mo it, that is the money combo. Let me just honestly, don't judge it. I know legitimately no, the the I love the, olives. The sweet I love and olives. Salty. And this is the worst thing I've ever heard. 
No, tr trust me. Just do me a favor. Try it, and you'll see what I mean. There will be no circumstances under which I would mm. pay money to order mm. that. It's, uh, you know what happens when I talk about uh, pineapple and olives? Like my 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 throat starts to like I start to get like this feeling where it salivates. It's so good. I wish I could go for that. Your right throat now. salivates? I, yeah, I highly doubt that. No, like, but... no, it's like I start to feel the glands. You know. Uh, anyway, it was a fun game. I'm very happy for did, the Eagles wait, fans. Did you eat that? What did you have? So actually, you know, I, I kind of like, you know, three kids. My wife was actually at a show working, like she had a trade show. I reheated like takeout that we had from the night before. It was it was pretty weak. But I must say it was my favorite Super Bowl party You're of all time. You're talking about my Papa yeah, John's. Yeah, yeah. I re, you, you had I reheated, actual reheated. Yeah, food. reheated ravioli. Um, I'd even go pizza. And I usually am like steadfast. You must order pizza. Didn't do it. But I got to watch it alone the first half. With my three kids, I, I I made them stay up, and I had a blast. It was so much fun trying to explain to them, and I I feel. Did you talk to them about Frank? What's his What's his name? Frank Reich. Reich? Uh, no, we didn't talk. Right, Frank Reich, uh, of course, one of the great uh, figures in the history of the Buffalo Bills, uh, the quarterback, the backup quarterback, very much like uh, Mr. Foles, who won the MVP, who led the Bills to the greatest comeback in, in, in Super Bowl history, which is uh, not Super Wikipedia Bowl, uh, playoff history. Wikipedia saying uh, one of the best backups of all time, or, or the best backup I mean, of all time. Look what he did. And then, of course, he's now the now offensive he's the coordinator for uh, the champion Eagles. Right. No, I was trying to teach my son about first downs and the hash marks and all that stuff. I was disappointed with the field. And I know a lot of people said, like, oh, you're being a negative Nancy and you always complain about things. But uh, let's be honest, that field was very patchy. It was not a Super Bowl-looking field. It wasn't. I don't know. Look like crap. What do you consider it? Like it, it has to look different arenas uniform, every time. Yeah, but it has to look. Time. It has to look pristine. This is the Super Bowl. It has to look uniformly I kinda, green. I kind of like it. No, it was patchy. It's it's Philly. No, it, it's it's no. It wasn't it's, Philly. It was Minnesota. No, I know it's in Minnesota. But what I'm saying is like, look, it's it's rough. It's rough and tumble. No. Like the like the Philadelphia Eagles. No, no that's not what it is. The Eagles. There's two teams playing. Stop. It. Yeah. Who cares? The the halftime show was great. We danced. It was a great time. Super Bowl parties are overrated. We danced? What does that mean? My kids love to dance. We danced to... So when the halftime came on, you we guys had a choreographed routine or what? We just went nuts. It was like a free-for-all. It was great. My daughter is turning around in a circle. Justin Timberlake fans, I'm Huge. Thinking? Huge. The 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 song from... Um, what is it from? Trolls? I got this feeling <laughs> inside my arms. Oh, that is... I know that song, but is that from so Trolls? I think it's from the, the soundtrack. Oh, geez. yeah. Come on. You'll, 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 you'll figure this out. No, it was fun. Super Bowl parties are overrated. You can't listen to the commentary. You can't, you know, you can't pay attention to the game. I was enjoying it. Um, in fact, that not listening to the commentary, not that big a loss. I, I will say the, I thought the commentary was not good. Like I'm a huge Al Michaels fan, Chris Collinsworth, but yeah, the, I think you can skip the commentary. I mean, did, go back and listen to the last play, the Hail Mary. I think they forgot that it was the end of the game. Like they, he made a comment about Gronkowski and then he's like, oh, and that's it. The I Eagles also think just won were, the Super Bowl uh, for the first time. Can we get I excited? I think they were submitting reviews for for the two Philadelphia plays that they uh, went over 16 different times to be yeah. wrong about. I'm just saying. It was a little underwhelming. In any event. Not a great effort. We get to Rick's picks. We can. Enough about the Super Bowl. And again, I weep for those It's Patriots a good fans. one this week. People. Okay. Strap what in. do we got? What do we got? This one, you know what? I sh should have talked to Ariel beforehand to not talk over the intro because this one, this one's legit. This is, this is, I'm, I brought the goods this week. Okay. All right. We're going to start with some things from MMAfighting.com, oh. our website. Wow. Just posted during the show, right at the end of the show, um, seven years ago. Today. UFC 126 took place today. The good and old so days. This is just wrapping. It's going to replay, but to watch the full thing, look at these memories. Go to MMA Fighting on Twitter. This is great. Look at the baby face on Ariel I mean, and the fighters. this more often? This is amazing. On this day. Look at that. Miguel, Miguel Torres, Torres giving the stare down. Who still has me blocked on Twitter, by the way, and I still don't know why. Look at that. Listen, I mean, you, how many people do you have blocked? Not that many. Turn about as fair. Oh, okay, fair enough. I thought it was more. Okay, but anyway. What a great... To listen, and by the way, to listen to one of the greatest stare-downs in, stare -downs in uh, MMA and UFC history. Is this the mask? Yes. Is this the uh, Jabawaki's Yes. Yes. I mean, look at the look at the who's who of, of fighters on this. This is, when, this is when it was a big deal. Can we get back to these days? You can if you go to <laughs> MMAfighting.com on Twitter and watch this video. Okay. We're moving on to wow. another MMA fighting uh, <laughs> missive. Danny Segura. Channeling uh, James Dean, we, we discussed this at length this morning. Am I right? Shout out to the guy. I mean, I feel like we have a new t Tinder uh, 
a pro- profile, profile pic? I mean, look, look we, we've got we've got the tucked in T-shirt, which is very underrated and not often Super seen. underrated. Rolled up sleeves. Rolled up T-shirt sleeves, which is Should have put time. a pack of cigarettes in it. Should have. Rookie. The movie. hair is, is you know. On point. Yeah, pretty reminiscent. Beard, of, on point. On, I mean, this is a good look. Make no mistake. I'm not. I'm not mocking this. I'm not poking fun. This is legit. How could you mock this? Legit. This is this is. Look at that neck. Look at, look at that Adam's apple. Shout out to the boy, Danny Segura, Col- my client actually. The so Colombian kid, doing the thing. Okay. If you're not familiar with this, there's there's an Australian guy, Aussie man reviews. <laughs> let's let's bring the audio up. What is this? Chasing you around, skinny Jeez. punches, Whoa. Jackie Chan rebounding type shit, and bouncing <laughs> your head like it's a fucking basketball. Just everything. You'd have to be careful of everything, or you could end up with an exploded face in general. Fuck. I wouldn't fight him. I mean, I, I wouldn't fight anyone, because I quit Taekwondo when I was about 10. Anyway, fuck yes, soldier of God. Fuck yes, mate. <laughs> Uh, it's this guy. He does he does reviews of things, uh, typically profane, always funny. This time he reviewed Yo Romero ahead of UFC 221. Do you think they paid for this? Funny. Yeah. Well, there's a there's a slate at the end with the with the oh, poster on it. It's actually so. pretty smart that they found this guy. Yeah. He, well, he's pretty well known. This is millions of of subscribers uh, that we're talking here. He, he's he, he's big time. He got popular a few years ago. And and uh, how many followers really on Twitter? Stuff. Uh, let's see. You don't know. His well, his YouTube channel this, is where he, you know, really this is smart. This is this is this is good promotion so let's right see. here. On YouTube, he's got 1.9 million subscribers. Whoa! And on Twitter, oh, he's got the official slate. There. He's got 47 point. Uh, for, I said that Ariel. Yeah. He's got 47k uh, on Twitter, but YouTube's really where he uh, he got super popular. And I thought it was very funny, obviously. Uh, and Yo Romero is actually terrifying, and I wouldn't fight him either. Man. Moving to our next one. We're, the theme here at the top is we're going to highlight this Australian card coming up. It's nice of you. Someone has to do it. Mark Hunt posting a video here. Do you recognize the man in black sitting down? The man in black sitting down. What the? Oh, I love this song, though. This is Bam Bam Tuivasa. Oh, yeah. Who's fighting in the third slot on the, on the card. Singing and... and Miming along with some Vanessa Carlton. Jamming out. Oh, here we go. <laughs> wow. This guy's the man. <laughs> He's a big boy. The dance move. Boom. Wow. Look at that. Okay. Snap. Shout out to Mark Hunt for giving us this magic. Uh, I think Mark Hunt's one of the must follows on, on IG. He's great. Um, I'm, I'm going to establish that. Okay. Oh, here we go. Floyd Mayweather. Oh, geez. First of all, Floyd respect the line. Mayweather. MMA. What are the odds, Patty? What are the odds? It's like he forgot to say the Patty part. Yeah, he kind of <laughs> got to it later. Um, come at the king you best not miss. I'll give him credit for that, though. But there was a there was a tweet before this when he walks in. You remember? Yeah. Mm, wasn't a fan well, of it. Well, it just kind of took the whole, you know, MMA world by storm. Sports world, really. I feel like this one was the one that got the most traction, though, because yeah. there was the debate over whether this was some promotion he still owed Patty yes, Power. Yes, Patty Power right there. Not owed. It could be a new promotion. It could be. Uh, I, I'm guessing this is probably a holdover. No. What's the point of... It be a holdover. What's the point? They had some kind of agreement that, you know, around the, the Mayweather... He's not going to these lengths for a holdover. This This did, like, millions of views. Le- what lengths? What lengths? You filmed three seconds in, in a in a you have to, octagon. You have to go to the gym. They had to rent it out. Go there. No one else is there. I'm you? thinking that this was he promised them some kind of content around the fight. No chance. Are you insane? Got it out now. No, it's a new deal. Maybe, could be. Now here's the big question: Is it just complete, you know, advertising BS, or is it legit? <laughs> what? Is it legit? Come on. I don't know. He posted that other picture. Okay, how many times do I have to watch this? <laughs> I've seen it. Fine. Let's let's change this. <laughs> it's another one? <laughs> this was great. 18. Dean Thomas killing it. Money Mayweather. MMA. What are the odds, Patty? I like what the... What are the odds? He, the delivery was the delivery, on, yeah. on point. 
And then shoe face. Nails him. Dropping the hammer. Although, uh, Timur Valiev uh, did this first, by the way. He mocked him first with uh, Zabit. That's okay. Was, Dean's was Dean's was the best. Uh, I thought that one was better, actually. Yeah, well, disagree. Take down. Agree to, agree to disagree. Naturally, yes. follow up to Floyd Money, Money Mayweather is Conor McGregor, but also in relation to money. Um, at this point, it, it's a it's a lengthy post here, but Conor and a group of, he's associated with held uh, a gala dinner here in New York. Uh, was it last week? I think it was last week or maybe the weekend. No, no, it was week. last Wednesday. It, it was in the middle of last week. Yeah. Um, they raised over $800,000 uh, for the hospital. Um, good to see. It, it's interesting when Conor McGregor's Instagram transforms into something serious and you see something like this. Um, so I took note and uh, well done by Mr. McGregor. This was amazing. You know, I've actually heard, I, I've talked to a lot of people in all seriousness uh, about um his his charitable efforts and and the time resources that he um you know that he donates for uh, this children's hospital in his hometown of Crumlin and uh Our Lady's Children's Hospital yeah, of Crumlin. Um I I am told that he goes like you know after hours when he knows no one's there watching he 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 really does a lot of great things for those kids and look whatever you think of Connor as a fighter whatever you think of him as a champion um any celebrity that does that and in particular that does it without a camera crew following him as often, you know, seems to be the case with celebrities doing charity work where there's people following, there's Instagram posters, Twitter, he doesn't do any of it. And, and, and yes, he's acknowledging this, but look, he's acknowledging it at an event where he's being honored. Great. He's not posting pictures of him with sick children or things like that. Um, you, how, Although how, I, how you, I mean, if he did, nobody's going to hold that against no, him either. I think I'm just saying the fact that he doesn't do that tells you where his heart is, tells you what, you know, um, what his true intentions are. It's not to get likes or to get attention. He really wants to help and give back. Uh, I think that's, I that, that. that's, that's very telling and the yep. amount of money that he's donating as well. So again, you could say what you want about him as a fighter or a champion, you know, doing this as a celebrity man who has a lot of money, who doesn't have to do it. Uh, I, I, I think the world of that. So kudos to him. And it's cool well done, that he, it's cool that he got recognized for it as well. Yeah. The post also coming days after the thing. He he's clearly not uh, looking for publicity at at this specific thing. I tried to attend. I tried to attend this this event, and 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 I said I don't want to interview you. I don't want to do any of that. I just want to attend and see what it's like and and see what he was being honored for. But um, I was told that no media was allowed. Whoops. I mean, that's fine. S sound call. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about sound, but yeah, don't, I respect don't, it. Don't let you in. All right. Keeping with Conor McGregor, also on his Instagram. Interesting how we can go from one to the other. Uh, this picture obviously picking up a lot of steam this week. I didn't get this one. No referee to save. I didn't get what this one. Mean? This came out after Max Holloway pulled out, and like, what does it mean? He uh, like a referee didn't, you know, save him, quote unquote, from the Edgar fight. Like it, the timing was weird, and the caption was weird. If I'm being honest. Yeah, I think the the thing is just that he's saying. This is what this is what happens in, in a fight. I'm gonna mush your head. I mean, on the streets, in the cage, wherever. Just, it happens. I don't know. It, okay. I mean, of course, I get that, but the timing, the caption, it just it seemed, I don't know, it seemed off. Well, Max Holloway yeah. responded in kind, showing. See, that was a good response. I thought yeah. to that one. This was a nice response. However, you missed one, and a lot of people missed it. And I told them that people missed it, that it was too inside. He had one labeled as date night with the, the Big Mac and the cupcake. Did you see that one? I did see that one. That was paying homage to, remember that Rita Ora date night tweet? Yeah. So he's saying Big Mac cupcake. He's making fun of him. You get it? Whoa. Yeah. He always talks about cupcakes. Your cupcake. That so he posted that one after the the referee one, and then I think he came back with this one just to to double down. This one's better. Yeah, that one was a little too inside. <laughs> also, he tagged. You know, did you see what he tagged it? He tagged it Royal Albert Hall, which is where they were. The, the, he put like the geotag. Yeah, it was it was good. I mean, I didn't get that at first. I needed some explaining. But I think Max Holloway is taking over the the social media. He does a great game. job. I think he's I think he's among the top. Um, cause he, 
not he's not too serious. He has fun with it. I think Conor McGregor is also up there. Um, but Max Holloway, I think I'm going to score this this round for Holloway. Okay. Um, speaking of Holloway, a lot of people um, asking him about the the fight on Twitter, the injury. I thought he had a, a a few funny things. One saying that he asked the doctors if they could cut off his leg and if he could fight handicapped. Obviously not true, but uh, kind of expressing how badly he wanted to be in there. Um, but I know it sucks. Hang in there. We're going to reschedule ASAP. He's he's letting the people know that uh, he st- he still wants to to get in there. He's still hungry for it. And 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 I must say, like he actually went into my mentions. He wasn't even tagged, and he was responding to people. That's how he does. Yeah. Because, you know why he does that? Because his mom always said that MMA cards are like a box of chocolate. You never know what you're going to get. I know some surprises suck, but some are good. Stay with me so you don't miss the good ones, brother. He also worked into the last tweet, uh, and it is what it is in there. Yeah. Um, Max Holloway killing the game. Okay. Speaking of Max Holloway killing the game, nice to see. Yeah, how about that? Big label sponsor getting into the to the Max Holloway business. Team Budweiser joining up with... Uh, Hawaii's finest. Okay. Mazel tov. What is this? Too long a caption to Jeez read, Louise. but this is actor Chris Pratt. Yeah, I saw him on uh, the Super Bowl commercial last, last That's night. That's right. Michelob, I think. Yeah, yeah, Really, yeah. really funny uh, commercial. But um, Chris Pratt here getting some work in with, with Randy Couture. Goes into a, a very long story about Couture being his coach um, when he was uh, at Oregon State. Uh, really? Wrestling camp? Yeah. Wow. So Chris Pat, re- the real deal on, on the wrestling mat. Um, but cool to see uh, the legend, the natural, getting it in with uh, Chris Pratt here. Um, but who knew? Chris Pratt, decorated, not decorated, sorry. that That's too, fu- too far, but legit wrestler. Also similar yes. two-man training session. John Jones posting this. How, what do you think of the musical choice for the training session? I'm down. I like this a lot. Who's the coach there? Like it's not Brandon vibe. Gibson, right? No. doesn't look like uh, Coach Six Gun. Yeah, it's good. I mean, it's good to see him training. Uh, there's a lot of optimism. He has a hearing coming up in uh, 22 days, February 27th in California. So that's California State Athletic Engineering. You know, Brandon Gibson tweeted out last week saying that he predicts that Jones will be fighting Cormier for the heavyweight title at the end of the year, December so that would be something. Don't count this man out. That would be something if John Jones reemerges, reemerges, and, 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 and what and a Jesus new layer to down. that feud. Oh yes, this one I picked, picked up a lot of traction one. as well. Uh, Burt Watson sharing a message about cancer, himself a cancer survivor, and if necessary, you get treatment. Never know how much you don't know until you need to know it. I got tested. I got diagnosed, and then I got treated. And now, I am cancer-free. I'm a cancer survivor. From age 45 and on, and especially in African-American men. Help me share this message, baby. Prostate cancer can be cured, but you gotta get tested. So, Go get tested. Obviously a good message for everybody. Yes. And then Very the important. URL for those listening, zerocancer.org slash Bert um, to learn more. Very happy to hear he's okay. I had no yeah. idea. I don't think any, many people did. Um, I think this was something he was probably keeping pretty private and then uh, used it purposefully for a good cause. Um, a great message. One of the best people I've met covering this sport, Bert Watson. Yeah, I remember... Um, we did those phone calls. Yeah, that was awesome. Time. A different time. Everybody, everybody loves Burt Watson. Glad he's okay. Okay, Mighty Mouse. <laughs> on a channel that I featured before that I've had to tell you a little bit about. On the right, you see wrestler Xavier Woods. And on the left, you see Mighty Mouse playing video games. This is a regular series that Xavier Woods does on his channel up up down down where he plays video games with a lot of the wrestlers but also some special guests sometimes demetrius johnson branching out of his own twitch channel to get it in with uh xavier woods everybody on the show look at this worlds colliding 
Mighty Mouse. Mm -hmm. So would you prefer us to call you Also cartoons on their shirts. The the Xavier Woods with okay. Goofy. New nickname. The Mighty One. The Mighty One. Demetrius with Possibly Dragon Ball Z. Greatest fighter. I want to say. To ever step foot I think on that's planet right. Earth. <laughs> that's what we're working towards, man. That's what we're working towards. Woods putting him over. Okay. Also from the gaming world and Mighty Mouse. EA Sports. OBJ. Look at had had a a, a an event where they were playing the game. Forget OBJ. Look at who he's playing Who's against. Playing? Mighty Mouse is playing against Jamie Fox. Oh, OBJ way cooler than Jamie Fox. Whoa, what? OBJ. How dare you, sir? Uh, Jamie Fox. We have an OBJ hat in the studio. A 20, 20 collabo. 20 oh, come on. Look, at, look at DJ. Jamie Fox. Look at you're, G. You're, you're gonna bury Jamie Fox? Oh my god. Look at DJ rubbing elbows with the big wigs. I love it. Finally getting his praise. I like too. I like I like gamer DJ just getting more shot. Yeah, this is great. I think it's this time. is great. It's about freaking time. Jeez, just send him to everything. Have him play video games against everything. Yes. That's it. Yes. Demetrius versus all. Pound for pound fighter. Start the start and the series gamer. on Twitch. Let's do it. I want to cut though. Okay. You mentioned this one, so we're not gonna go through the whole thing. Great. But Derek Lewis, also an Instagram king and, and favorite of the show. Vibing out, asking for help. Look at that beard. An incredible beard. He said it was a his coach, a striking coach? Or yeah, yeah, but look, 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 look at the tears. How did he do that? He cried or licked his fingers and rubbed it on his eyes. It's just, the attention to detail is just phenomenal. Derek Lewis, uh, very good social media follow. <laughs> okay. Um, you can't see the tweet here from the UFC, but it was to announce an event coming up in Chicago. From CM Punk, we get sideways eye emoji and scratching chin, thinking pensive yes. emoji. What What are your What is What is your Well, take it's because on the the UFC is going back to Chicago. They're going to Chicago on June 9th. It's their first pay per view in Chicago. It's at the United Center. It would be absolutely crazy. It would be promotional malpractice of the highest order if he is not on this card. If we are going to do this again, if he is serious, and I know he is, and if the UFC is serious and Dana White is serious, and I know they are, this is the time to do it. This is the venue. Is there any is the way place. it doesn't happen? This has to Him be Him being on the card, I think, sells it out. Um, yeah. Alone. Forget about anyone else, and you know they're going to put a title fight because they always have title fights on their pay-per-views. Do CM Punk versus Mike Jackson in Chicago, and you got two years of buildup. That's the fight. That's the one to make. June 9th on pay-per-view. And, and and let's just say this. I hear everyone who said everything about his, you know, debut and his signing. It will be almost four years. By the time this fight happens, amazingly, it will be almost four years to the day he was signed. He was signed around like October. UFC veteran CM Punk. No, and if, he's had some horrible luck and, and, and he's getting older and the injuries and all that. And I understood what everyone said. I really did. Never fought before, no athletic um, background other than pro wrestling. But can we all just agree, the fact that he has stuck with it two years later, the fact that he didn't just say, yeah, I got my ass kicked, I got paid a million bucks, it's all well and good, let me go do this, that, and the other. The fact that he is still like at Rufus in Milwaukee doing the same thing with very little fanfare, trust me, I've tried to have him on the show many a time. He doesn't want to talk. Like, he is just focused. There will come a time where I think we will talk. But right now, he's not looking for any of that. That is commendable. Like, the, the, the merits, the idea to keep him around, the idea to sign him, it's all arguable. It's all debatable. And, and I totally respect that. But, like, the fact that he actually stuck with it after he was, you know, thoroughly dominated, you can argue embarrassed in his debut, I think is very commendable. And I think it's pretty damn cool that the stars are aligning here. Because if he would have fought in Vegas... In, in 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 Toronto, like that's all fine, but they're in Chicago and it's pay per view. It's just too perfect. It has to but, get done, and I think it should be Mike Jackson because he's the one guy who has stuck with it this whole time, and it makes all the sense in the world. It completes the whole story. If that's the if that's the thing though, if that's the narrative, if if the narrative is he's stuck with it, he's trying to do this the right way. Is this the right way? Is it not taking some other fights? Getting no, he, that experience and then he wasn't taking, he wasn't sitting on the sidelines just like twiddling his thumbs. I mean, he, I know, he was getting better. The way um, he was, the way you get better is in the fights. The the no fighter is jumping two fights into the UFC. Yeah, but we've already we've already passed that. We've we've talked about that. To me, 
if you would have asked me UFC 203 Cleveland Ohio yeah. is Punk going to fight again? I say probably not. You know, it didn't go his way. He did it. He got it out of his system. You know, he's older. Why? You know what I mean? And 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 I think it's very commendable that he would come back two years later and try to do this. In his hometown, there'll be tons of pressure on him. In Cleveland, he almost kind of like flew under the radar a little bit because it was all about Stipe. Yeah. I think there was obviously questions when he was doing it. Is this that kind of, you know, one and done gimmick? Is it just, you know, he's trying to leverage it and he's going to then go back to pro wrestling? It's no, There's no doubt in my mind that he wants to do this seriously. He wants to be a fighter. Um, and then you could say, well, I should just, the UFC be giving him that platform? They, let, let's be very honest here. Like the, you, you, you have to give him that platform. Well, the days of UFC caliber are over. It's not yeah. what it once was. This is in 2006. This is my, 2007. My, not, I don't even want to say objection because I have no objection. I think that this is somewhere he should fight, and I think it's a no-brainer that he can he can move tickets there and, and do really, really well and draw eyeballs on, on television as well. But I don't like the idea of him fighting on these only these you know big pay-per-view cards as i'd be very surprised if this doesn't go well i'd be very surprised if he gets another shot yeah i just feel you like sell the second one the first one was a disaster yeah. it didn't go his way He's i feel like home. It's, it's too much pressure for himself no it, it's i feel He's like not it's, the kind of guy to back i mean uh, i'd be very surprised if he doesn't want this this is why, why yeah. did you tweeted that no, I know he. I know he wants it, but maybe somebody needs to say, like, get some experience somewhere else, and then Mike ja Mike Jackson. Yeah, that's fair. That's, that's the fair. one. I'm not, I'm not saying th don't put him in there against some like 23 year old kid. Yeah, that they're gonna try. To this is the fight. Jackson's been calling him out. He's done a great job. He's put together videos. This is it. It's perfect. This, this is the fight, and I think that that's that's a a good l matching up of opponents. I, I that's the fight. Do it. Yeah, that's the fight. You're right. I, I think it'll uh I think it'll definitely do well in Chicago. The guy can the guy can draw. Anyway. I mean, have you looked at the 221 pay-per-view card? That 220 221 oh, 221 is up there. I think 177 is 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 We'll get to that later. Right, right. We'll get to that later. You asked right, the question right, right, already. Right, right. And you know you asked. Hey, okay, the question. I forget. Okay. I forget. I'm antsy. Keeping in Oh, here we go. The world the mixing worlds of MMA and professional wrestling. We have a YouTube video here from Wrestle Pro. Oh, I wish it would get into it sooner. You can't fast forward? I can't fast forward, so I'm just going to talk about it. Colby Covington. Okay, we get a walk out here. Colby Covington. Colby loves uh, the wrestling. Up. Appears to be in good, I mean, really good shape. Who's yeah, that he guy? Looks, he looks Jack. I don't know. But he's going to get into the ring with what I believe was supposed to be. Do people know who he is there? <laughs> Not much cheers. He's wearing his UFC gloves. He's calling out, if you can't hear, he's calling out Tyron Woodley. I think he called him Tyquil. He did call him Tyquil. Does he come out? Did you not see this? No, I have not seen it. Oh, okay. Oh, he comes out. Here he Ty is. Tyquil's coming out. From parts unknown. Oh, wow. Look at this. <laughs> a large fellow. A large man carrying a UFC belt. Who's supposed to be... You know what? This I didn't see I didn't see this before. But this guy kind of looked like Rumble. The face kind of looked like Rumble. The, and the well-manicured beard. Look at that. Walking in there with the bells. He's got the Everlast gloves. Bit of a belly. Yeah, this guy's not in great shape. Not a, not a true facsimile for Tyron Woodley. Is Tyquil? It, is it a is it a sports commentator thing to say? Blah 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 is X person, huh? I've I've noted that 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 that's a thing that is regularly said. For example, not in the best shape is Tyquil. Oh, ready for a fight? The Yoda thing is Colby Covington. Did I do that? No, that, that? no, no. But in sports commentary, you hear that a lot. I noticed it during the Super Bowl. I noticed it during every UFC card. Yeah. It's blah blah blah. Is the person Yoda. reversing the order of the? All right. You know what? I, I had it. Yeah. I what the hell? Okay. Um, I have a I have a premier oh, great. team area. Oh, I'm so excited. Do about you know this. who it is? 
I can't wait to find out. It's Liverpool. Liverpool is now well, my... There's a, there's a member of our squad, a new member, Seamus. He's a Liverpool guy. Did you know that? We were talking about Hardcore. that. We were talking about our, our teams, you know, are, are our you, squads, Are you really clubs. promoting this right now? I mean, what is that? A combined 36 votes? No, no, no. Buddy. This is th- this. This was the initial poll to determine who the four and, and who, people in the votes would why be. Why do we care then, about your 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 rooting? My premiership. Team? Yeah, because it's it's now the the winningest team. You know, Bill Simmons did this gimmick once, and then he picked Tottenham he Hotspur. Yes, he did it already. I wish he did this it. Is gimmick infringement. Well, guess what? Tottenham Hotspur can suck it. I actually found out from Liverpool. my friend Oscar Willis that they call. The, the 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 Tottenham Hotspurs, they call them the Yids because the original owner, I think, was Jewish. How crazy is that? It's, I don't love that, but... No, it's like a, it's a term of endearment. Anyway, yeah. Liverpool. Okay, that's it. This is the big news. Well, I mean, look, you have a squad. Do you remember who your squad is? Yes, of course. They're represented right over there. Leicester Their City. Their name is... Oh, okay. And, 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 and what? Just because the fans voted Liverpool that you're just going to go with that? No emotional connection? I gave every connection? opportunity. And when did this happen? Multiple weeks ago, right? No, this happened last week, buddy. I, have, have you watched this? I, I don't match? like the way you're downplaying you watched the, the Liverpool this squad. Is a, that, this that is, is an abuse of your no, no, no. celebrity. You, know what? you you have a premiership team? Yeah, now, but I, I didn't ask the too. people to vote on it. No one gives a crap about my premiership team. No one cares. You're right. Nobody does give no. a crap about your premiership guess team. What? They suck. They, they, they suck. <laughs> <laughs> they 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 suck. They give less of a crap about yours. No, they love it. There was a lot of votes, and I'm happy to have have joined. How many votes? There's like two thousand votes, and with thirty nine percent Liverpool, it is Man U second place. I'd be, I'd be a little embarrassed. Just saying, you would, you would. Look, I don't. And now, I don't and choose and now, and now what are you doing? What I are you doing people. with this? This is my team now. I'm going to support them till my dying days. Obviously. Hmm. Okay. Uh, last thing here. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, we'll see. You know what? what? You see? No, you know, no, no. This is no, great. You know what? We're not going to do Let's it. We're not going to do it now because <laughs> because you're. You know what? No. Wait, who's Let's, Gwenny Gwen? Let me let me sit here for two hours and do a rant on everybody in the MMA world. Uh, you mean like Ali? Like Ali Abdelaziz? Spitting fire. You know what? That was <laughs> that was pretty. I, it it was reminiscent of like a Comedy Central roast where you just come up there and you've got your list of people to and hit. How about and you this just, guy? Boom, 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 boom. He's like straight out of a 1980s hammer pro wrestling. After hammer. Yeah. Got him. Wait, who's this? This is fan of the show Gwen. Oh wow. Who today? Wow. Had a baby. Wow. And you know what? B- while the show was going on, she tweeted me to tell me that she had. Come on. We had been talking about it. She, I knew she was having a baby, but she had it today. Wow. Um, the baby's name is. Melina. Beautiful name. And it was born today. Just casually uh, tweeting that at you. No, well, well. You've been talking about it. She knew I had a, I yeah. had a baby. She's a fan of the show, not somebody who's like uh, random. Like we, sure. You know, you have a- she's, she's checked in all the time, um, but I knew she was pregnant. And today she she tweeted to give the, the wow. call that that she had her baby. Girl? Looks like a girl. Congrats. Yeah, Melina. All right, just checking. Um. Congrats to Gwen and her, her boyfriend, I believe. Where she um, lives. I saw there was something on Twitter. Let's find out. Let's see where her location is on Twitter. Well, that's very exciting. Caliphus? Where is that? Not familiar. Is that the, a California thing? Yeah. Settlement in Madeira, California. Shout out to Gwen. Shout out to Molina. Welcome to the world. Congratulations. Congratulations. Mazel tov. How exciting. Yeah, Ariel's gonna walk all over this. No, no, no. This I don't touch. You know me. Love those babies. Well done, Gwen. What's the state of the uh the the poopy these days? Have we transitioned to to full poopy or is it No, she's only nine weeks old now. So it's still mustard? Yeah, it's still mustard. It's getting even more liquid the, these days. Has the, the crust in the belly, has that dropped? That's dropped, right? Oh well, that's yeah, that was a long time ago. A month ago. Okay, okay. All right. She's a beautiful, perfect little angel yes. with no crust in her belly. Good, 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 good. Little fat, chubby cheeks. Um, and now Gwen can experience the yes. same thing that I have. First one for Gwen? I, I think so, yeah. I think so. Um, she didn't say one way or the other, but I'm, I'm pretty sure. Okay, let's go to the questions now. No time to let's waste. Let's go to the questions. Let's go no rapid fire question. here, okay? Question of the week. Do you plan on ordering? Yes, I was UFC very curious. Twenty-one pay-per-view. What are we week? at? 
with 21,000 votes. Wow. 87% say no. 13% say yes. Now, so if we convert that, yes. That's how many pay-per-view buys for Okay, but are are you surprised by this number? No, I'm not. Did you think it would be less or more? I thought it would be less. Meaning you thought it would be like less than 10% saying yes? I thought it'd be less than 10% saying yes. Yeah. Now, I don't know if there might be a baseline of 10% that'll say yes anytime. No what? Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Um this is up there with 177. 177, remember, was TJ Dillashaw against Hennebarau. Hennebarau gets hurt. TJ Dillashaw against uh, Joe Soto. And, and of course, that wasn't the original, so you can't really fault them. But at the time, I mean, you look at that card, it, w- it wasn't the best card of all time. No. I, I remember talking about Tony Ferguson versus Danny Castillo, which was the co-main for that card. And this was like way before Tony Ferguson was Tony Ferguson. Well, I remember, if you were paying attention, eh, maybe not. Uh, I think Shayna Baszler against uh, Betch Cohea. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of aged. You know, it's aged this, well. This fight is a great fight. It's a tremendous make fight. No, make no doubt about it. But it's hard to... Luke Rockhold yeah. versus versus Yoel Romero is a fantastic fight. It's hard to get over the fact that, you know, they were trying to do this fight for free. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Like, um, Holloway versus Edgar was never supposed to be on free TV and then pay-per-view. No. Cody versus... T- you know what I'm saying? It's very rare to get title fights on free TV these days. And also, you've got the guy, Robert Whitaker. Yeah initially headlining it, it, you know, it's, it's not ideal, but uh, look, if you buy, if you buy pay-per-views, you know, based on the construction of the entire card, then you're, you know, you, maybe this is one that you're not going to go for, but the, t- the fight at the top, I, I, I'd throw down money for it. That fight is, that fight is a money fight. It's a tremendous fight. It's an incredible fight. It just feels like a, it feels like this, a substitute. This, is, this this could very well be an FS1 card. I mean, just looking at it, look yeah. at next week's card. Look at the week. At, this, this could. Ve- I mean, we have seen FS1 what, cards. What do you do in that scenario? I mean, make it a free do? card. No, it sucks. You have the commitments yeah. to pay per view. It sucks. I mean, you're just going to take it on the chin. Yeah, that top fight though. I I will stand. It's tremendous. That. I I would I would plop down for that one. Okay, Dana White. Very. Um, What's the word I'm looking to? Had strong words about yeah, Mario yeah. Yamasaki's uh, stoppage yeah. in, in the Valentina Shevchenko yeah. fight. Um, but this person yeah. is is asking the question, is it also the fault of the matchmaker? Are there yeah, other people absolutely. to blame here? Perfect storm. Uh, it, it starts with the matchup. Clearly, she wasn't ready for someone like Valentina, and the odds makers agreed because I think she was a, like a minus 900 going into mm-hmm. it. So, you know, this is a new division. Uh, I believe Valentina is one of the very best female fighters in the world, regardless of division. Uh, I think that she was very close to winning the bantamweight title. She beat fighters like Holly Holm at bantamweight. Was very close to beating Amanda Nunes twice, and so she drops down to one to twenty-five, and she looked freaking amazing. I mean, like physically, yeah. she looked amazing. The first like thirty seconds of that fight, her hand speed was incredible. She was tagging her left and right, um, and so yeah, complete effort from top yes. to bottom from her for sure. She had a point to prove. Um, the matchmaking. Yes, problem. Yamasaki is a problem. This is not new. No. I mean, not new lest we all. forget Kiesa and Kevin Lee. I mean, we could go on and on. I, That's only recent. Hilaire McCruz the whole list is. sent us, uh, the team, like the 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 bout uh, order, and it had like the ref and judges assignments. And I remember looking if Yamasaki was on, and I was like, oh gosh, here's like four or five fights that he was assigned to. Get ready. Something's going to... I remember saying... I wish I tweeted it just for proof. I remember saying, like, just watch these fights. I guarantee at least something is going to happen. He's just not good at his job. No. Nice guy. I've met him. Very nice guy. No problems with him. Not good at his job. Should not be refereeing MMA, period. Um, I don't care if it's minor leagues, amateur, uh, mid-tier promotion, Bellator, UFC, no one. He is not good at his job. If you are not good at at your job... And you're supposed to be in there to protect the fighter's, um, you know, health and safety. To be there as, you know, the the third man in the cage, the only other person who's not competing. You got to be good at your job. You're not good at your job. How many times do you have to go through this? And I say the UFC can tell any per uh, any 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 commission we do not want him working our shows. And those commissions, more often than not, would oblige. Uh, look at Mazagati. Look at Kim's Win- Kim Winslow. They would oblige. Stop using him. Stop recommending him. The onus is on you at this point. So Dana could blame whatever he wants. He could go on Instagram and say whatever he wants. The onus is on the UFC. Bad job. And then we get to the corner thing, and I maintain 
find me one fighter that says, yeah, I want the corner to step in. It's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. It will never happen. And, and, and I think some people may have misunderstood what I said yesterday on Twitter or wrote on Twitter. The pay structure leads to an impossible decision to make for the corner because it's not like boxing where you know what your fighter is making the second they step foot in the cage or the ring, I should say. You throw in the towel in boxing, all right, you take an L, you live to fight another day. These fighters, for the most part, in this position, Priscilla um, Cachoeira, who, by the way, has been through so much, just read the stories about her life and what she's overcome, need this money. They're fighting for like 10 and 10. It's her debut. She will go back to those people um, without a doubt, inevitably. I will guarantee it. She will go back and say, why'd you rob me of that money? I could have come back. Mm. Congo Barry, uh, Scott Smith against uh, Pete Sell. Like we've seen it happen a million times, guys. But it, 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 it's, it's crazy to be put in that position. They're not just worrying. They're being put in a position to not just worry about wins and losses. They have to consider financial ramifications. And that's just the structure. The structure is antiquated. It doesn't work. It was put in place by the Fertitas when they bought the company and they wanted to encourage fighters to go all out and put on an exciting yeah. product. And yeah, the company was struggling. I get it. I understand why they did it from their perspective. 2018, it shouldn't fly that way anymore. They shouldn't They shouldn't stand for it. So, you know, it's all these things mixed together. If, if, yeah. if we're going to sit and wait for fighters or, excuse me, corners to throw in the towel, you'll wait forever. In this, you know, in, in this era, with the way things are structured right now, it's not happening. It's just not. I think, no doubt about it, money is a motivation here. Like, clearly. The, the structure... Is, is an issue that exacerbates the problem, I think. But I don't think it's only that. I don't think that it, there is there is no chance her corner thought she was going to win that fight. There is no chance she thought. Did she you was listen to the corner audio? I I actually went back and 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 listened to some of the audio, and I found a clip online that had no commercials because I wanted to see if I could find everything that they said. And 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 she's like, my knee, my knee. Yeah. And, and they're like, forget about it. Forget about the knee. Well, I what? think at one point he goes, did you feel her punches? one of her corner men, and then she says, no, but my knee my knee is... What are you talking about? Up. She's, she's like kind of giving you a hint that something's up. Yeah, but what I'm, what I'm getting at is I think it's more a cultural thing, an MMA culture thing than necessarily the money thing. There's no way that they thought they were taking money out of her pocket. There's no way she thought they were taking money out of her pocket. That was an opportunity to throw in the towel, but I think there's a culture around... People being judged. Oh yeah. When you have the it's like when you tap due to strikes. I think, yeah, exactly. Oh, you're weak. I think that that is much more the problem. Not that the money is not a problem. The money is a problem. But I think that that is what needs to be changed more, um, before the towel will be thrown in more readily. Um, there's a toughness. You're you're not tough if you have the towel thrown in. It's crazy. Um, it's absolutely stupid. The whereas it's much more for- preservation than you not being tough. But again, she proved she was tough. She got beat. Mercilessly. Yes, but again, understand when you weigh in on this. Understand the sport, the landscape, what we're dealing with. Uh, 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 you know, I, I saw Mike Bond tweet. I hope it was worth it for ten thousand. Guess what? It probably was worth it for ten thousand. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like yeah. that. That's just what we're dealing with here. We're dealing mm-hmm. with fighters who don't make a lot of money to begin with, who don't have a lot of money, who have been through hell and back to get to this point. Remember, Junior Albini? He told us in Brazil he went nine fights without getting paid a dime. Yeah, like, these fighters are poor. And so they're going to live and and fight their butts off until the referee pulls, you know, pulls the other fighter off. And that's it. Yeah. So th- that's just the sport that we're dealing with. Whether you like it or not, it's not changing. I want to say one thing about, you know, the responsibility of people making the match or whatever. I One of the things I like about MMA is that sometimes the underdog can get this opportunity. And sometimes they can make good on it. We've seen huge upsets in this sport. So I get you know, seeing that this was not an appropriately matched fight. But the onus has to be on the referee. I think above all else, the onus has to be... The, the, Absolutely. If you can make a match, <laughs> your assumption is that the person in the cage is going to protect your fighters. I don't think you can go into it assuming that your your fighters are not going to be Of protected. the three people who are to blame for this, the matchmaker is last. Um, the referee... Am, am I... I mean, like, UFC for for putting him in there, for allowing him to be in there... Uh, CAB MMA for allowing him to be in there. Yeah, we can't have it. You know what I mean? And 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 his like, what are you looking at? Especially in that second round. I mean, the first round, I think it should have been over. Honestly, agreed. And then in that second round, where she's just mauling her, 
it's it's very hard to watch. I don't there enjoy were, watching that. There was that. no point where she that. mounted offense in, the, in that entire horrible. play. It was it's horrible. Time, it's time to stop it. But I, I like... I like when an underdog does get an opportunity. I don't think we can go away. Like, I think that's one of the things that makes MMA great. You get this opportunity, but... And, and, and like, fighter safety has to be... It preserved. just drives me nuts when I see people who understand the sport and, like, write all the columns you want. Like, understand what you're dealing with. You're dealing with poor fighters who need this money desperately. Um, no one's throwing in the towel for them. It's just not happening because they want to take their chances. If there's a 1% chance that they survive and win, they're taking that chance. Um, by the way, my pick for Female Fighter of the Year, remember award show? Valentina Shevchenko, holy smokes. Yeah. I mean, I hate the insinuation that Nico Montano is not going to fight her or afraid to fight her, but right now I see a massive gap in talent between her and everyone else at 125, like a gigantic gap. Yeah. And and you know what? She gets the belt. The UFC has but now, something so, with her. So do we not, do you not put her in there? No. With She's the uncrowned champion. No, this is a lesson that champions should not be crowned off reality shows. You have to make that fight, and you have to have oh, a good referee. It, one million that's, percent. That's it. Valentina Shevchenko's next fight. I don't fight imagine needs it will go much belt. differently. I don't imagine it will go much differently. And the, and then you can't say, oh, you know, the matchmaking is to blame for it. That that's the fight that has to be made. This is she has the to fight, fight that has the title. To be made. So you you need to have the referee being the, the ultimate sure. arbiter of of the safety. There it can't be it can't be everybody else's yeah. problem. It, it you know th this is the match that has to be made. So let's let's improve. Blown away by 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 how good she is. Do you think Max Holloway's injury will affect his popularity in any way? No. I mean, look, he just fought. I saw some people suggesting interim title. He just fought in December. Also, he guy. doesn't have a real history of this. Doesn't have a history of it. Um, and he's handled it. Handled it like a pro. He's like he apologetic. He will be back. Hopefully, it's not too serious, the ankle injury. And uh, hopefully, he can fight maybe on that. You know, Hawaii card. Uh, not Hawaii. I wish. Uh, everyone wishes. The, the, the Chicago card in June. International Fight Week, we'll see what happens with Cody and TJ. Maybe that removes uh, DJ from that equation. Um, no, it doesn't hurt him. I mean, it's a bummer. It sucks. And, uh, you know, I understand a lot of people bought tickets from Hawaii so close. So I was really looking forward to seeing what the scene would be like in Hawaii with him fighting. But no, everyone pulls out. There is a thing, though, that anytime a fighter has to pull out now, there's there's a jump to... I didn't feel it this let, time, honestly. Let, let's establish an interim title. Yeah. I can't believe this guy, like, kind of, kind of slow down. Hold, hold the horses a little yeah. bit. If Nate Diaz wants to fight at UFC 222, would it be against Frankie Edgar or would it be it's, something it's not gonna else? It's going to be would against you, Frankie Edgar. Would you add Nate Diaz to the card? or is Oh, yeah, he, I would add him to the card, but they're going to have to. No, no, to... no. That, I don't mean that. I meant, like, would you add him versus inserting him into a fight that you know with Frankie Edgar? No, well, um, they don't fight in the same weight class. I mean, I guess Frankie, yeah, Frankie could, go Edgar up to, could go up to one. No, that makes no sense. I like Edgar versus Ortega or Darren Elkins. I think those fights make a lot of sense. Remember, Frankie yep. hasn't fought since last May. It's going to be almost a year since his last fight. Yep. And uh, of course, he had the injury, but you know, you still got to you still got to fight. He's got three so who, kids. Who is the fight to make with Nate? Diaz? Listen, the fight to make, in my opinion, is Eddie Alvarez. From what I understand, he doesn't want to fight Eddie Alvarez for a whole host of reasons. Um, so I, I just don't see it happening. Um, but. If there's one non-champion that could save that card, it's him. He's the only non-champion right now that could save the card. He's the only non-champion that can headline a pay-per-view, and the pay-per-view probably does better than the original because he's just so... I tweeted out the, the the idea of putting him on the card, and I think it got like 10,000 likes. I've never had that many likes for like a non-news story. It was just like a stupid tweet. I didn't think it would... Like, people love the guy. People miss yeah. him. They love him. He's a draw. He has a very, very passionate fan base. Um, honestly, you put him in there against anyone, and I think it sells. Literally anyone. Anyone. But right now... Andy Alvarez is a good anyone. I like yeah, that. Yeah, there's there's no talk of it. I mean, yeah, I honestly believe that Nate Diaz would be down to fight this weekend in Perth. You just have to make it worth his while. Is the upcoming Tough a good idea of how to reboot or spice up the Tough series? No. show used to be a camp no. miss. No. Got the, the best... I mean, two of the best possible fighters you could have as coaches. Got... I believe it's all undefeated fighters. Is that accurate? I think that's yeah, I yeah, think that's right. No, no, still not. It, it, no show lasts this long. I mean, there's two a year. Sometimes there was three a year. Um, the show worked when there was like six pay per views and and like two free shows a year. Did the Ronda Rousey season do well? It did all right, but not anything compared to like the Spike days. 
I'll be curious to know how many people tune in because they don't know a lot about Stipe's kind of personality. No, the same way Ronda. And Stop, every every year we talk about it at the beginning. We're like, oh yeah, the first try, episode, yeah. and then come episode four, it's like doesn't even exist. It's like it lives in this vacuum. It doesn't even exist. Yeah. And so that's why I can't even get like all up in arms about them being on the show because in the past I was like, ugh, I don't want to see Brock Lesnar and Junior Dos Santos in, in mm -hmm. basketball jerseys and, and it kind of like waters them down. Do. I won't even I probably won't even watch it. You know, the, I actually really like DC and, and Stipe, so like I, I might want to watch yeah. the first episode, but like I, I this there's is too much MMA. This is what to begin I think with. it becomes though is like it's never about the fighters anymore. Now it's all about the coaches. Yeah, and you have the two biggest ones, so I don't know what it'll do. The I, fundamental I, problem with Tough is this: when it debuted, there was like eight shows a year. Now there's forty something shows a year. Yeah, it's the a talent lot of MMA. doesn't exist. And yeah, they can open up new weight classes, but it just doesn't exist. Um, so unless you do like these tournaments, you know, for uh, come, they've done it all. They've done it all. There's going to be at least two left, this one and one more in the, the fall, winter, and then we'll see with the new TV deal. Okay, here's a question. My wife just got back from New York City. I noticed that Conor McGregor was in New York City on Instagram. Yeah. When she got home, I told her, and she says that she stood by someone on the subway that looked exactly like Conor McGregor. Here's the question for you. Any chance that Conor McGregor rides the subway? This is the question? That's the Honestly, I thought that this was going to go in a totally different direction. Like, my wife just got back from New York City, <laughs> and she told me... Um, what were you... Yeah, keep going. And, 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 you know, like, you get those tweets, like, my wife left me. Those are hilarious. You ever see those? Like, you, you, you put out some news. Time out. You don't get those tweets? What? And also, why are they hilarious? People's because they're jokes. Name? It's like... Like, like Woj tweets, you know, breaking, you know, the Knicks have traded Carmel Anthony. And then like the first reply is my wife left me. You never see those? What? No. It's like, it's like first or like when, when. Oh, it's like daddy. Daddy, da king, daddy. all that stuff. Yeah. It's a, there's ton, Come on. Okay. But I think we need to evaluate this. There's, Would Conor McGregor no, ride the subway? There's absolutely zero chance that Conor McGregor. He's riding around in a Maybach. No, there's no way that he was on the subway. Like. Less than zero chance. Maybe to do a photo shoot when down no. there. Um, no. Zero, there's, there's no chance. There's, Sorry, Justin. Yeah. Uh, you have to break it yeah. uh, to your wife that that was not Conor McGregor. No, no, there's no, there's not a chance no, no, in no, no, in hell. No, 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 no. That's it. That's it. Conor McGregor on the subway? Are you crazy? <laughs> I'd like to see it. Look, you know what? LeBron James rode the subway. Yeah, but that was as a team. And guess and guess what they had readily available? Camera. Yes. You know what? Also, was funny about that. The guy. The no, please don't film me. Guy. Oh, that was the best. That was so. Could good. you not? Could, oh, that's could it. You, could you not? Could you not? That was the best. Oh, that guy. I mean, how do you become that guy? Like, do you have to know who LeBron James is, right? Like, is it possible this guy didn't know who LeBron James was? Uh, he, well, he said he didn't. He did an interview right after. He said that he hadn't had his he, morning latte yet. He said he didn't. Do you think it was a con? My thing is, I think he knew who LeBron James was and consciously knew that if he goes, could you not, that he would get attention for it. I really believe that it was a calculated effort. You have to know who LeBron James is, and you have to know that this is a moment, that that this is you, something you do want to participate in. Being the the savvy person he was, he opted out because he knew that it would be actually opting in. He's brilliant. Do you know this guy. Tyrone guy that Derek Lewis was talking about? The, you know this guy? Or you didn't hear that part? Uh, Are you busy? Is this the the I, the guy who goes? I after your wife. Yeah, I'm gonna f your wife. Someone. Is this you? Mu you must love this. After someone just sent it to talking me. about all it the has one point three million stuff. views. Oh, there's this is not just one thing. Like this is a regular series. It's a character played by. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna break the break the fourth oh, here wall here. Go. There's a character. There's a character that I know about. Uh, oh. This guy. This guy plays a character called Tyrone, where he, you know, smacks up like street thugs and says, you know, I after your wife, and it, and typically there's like a fake scuffle at the end of it. Um, Jeez. But uh, I am familiar with that character. Okay. All right. I just, I just after your wife, says Tyrone. Um, Thank you. That's it. We're done. See you next week. Big show. I mean, aren't they all? Fair enough. <laughs> you can hit my music. We are out of time. So much has happened today. It's hard to digest it, really big show they're all big shows it's just another monday it's just another manic monday oh i look forward to it every week 
Some other things that happened last week. How about Arjun Buller coming back? Yes, April 14th. Looking forward to that. Anderson Silva, some bad news. We'll see what happens with his quote unquote legacy, if you will. What is going to happen to UFC 222? That's the big news to monitor this week. We will be all over that. Don't you worry, my friends. I'm happy that the London card finally got a main event because uh, that was starting to become an epidemic. That was starting to become a real worry for all the UK fans, but we figured it out. It's Fabricio Verdum versus Alexander Volkov. All right, we are out of time. Thank you so much to everyone who tuned in. Thank you very much to everyone who stopped by. We appreciate it very much. Thank you very much to Valentina Shevchenko. Congratulations on an unbelievably dominant performance on Saturday night. And I appreciate her coming on like three hours after Getting home, hellacious travel day, like a literal day, 24 hours of travel. Thank you very much to Quinton Rampage Jackson. How much fun was that? Nice positive update from our friend Rampage. Thank you very much to Derek Lewis. Best of luck to him on February 18th. Thank you very much to John Dotson. Hopefully that all works out as well. Thank you very much to James Vick, who was spitting fire. Holy smokes. Great stuff. Thank you very much to Alex Volkanovsky. Good luck to him on Saturday. Thank you very much to Sage Northcutt. Good luck on February 18th. Thank you very much to Fabrizio Redoom. Good luck to him. Thank you very much to Cody Gar Garbrandt. Good luck to him as well. A lot of good lucks. Thank you very much to Robert Whitaker. Good luck with the baby. And of course, thank you to Ali Abdelaziz. Back next week. Say, tight place. Say, peace. I'm out of here.